بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is the data show for the lip and the tongue as a part of the digestive system Here you can see that in this picture we are seeing the epithelium this epithelium and this epithelium This epithelium is the epithelium of the oral mucosa which is the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium You don't have here keratin Here it is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, which can be present or found in the outer surface of the lip. Underneath both of them, we have connective tissue. So, this is the oral. On the right side, it is the oral mucosa, and the oral mucosa it is formed of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And it covers these four sites. The soft palate, the inner surface of the lip. This is the outer surface of the lip. This is the inner surface of the lip. As well as the cheeks and the floor of the mouth. Uh, this picture on the right side, as we have said, it is the oral mucosa, non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, present in four sites. And this is the keratinized stratified squamous present in the outer surface of the lip in addition to uh, other three sites as the gums, dorsal surface of the tongue, and the hard palate. So we have four sites here and four sites there. Uh, here we can see this connective tissue underneath this epithelium. This connective tissue is called lamina propria, and it is formed of loose connective tissue and contains blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics, in addition to the salivary glands, the minor salivary glands. These are serous acini, and these are mucous acini of the minor salivary glands. This is a diagram for the lip, and as you see, you have uh, the outer surface formed of a skin, which is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, and characterized by the presence of the hair follicles with the associated sebaceous glands. On the other side, which is the inner side, we have a typical oral mucosa formed of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And in the lamina propria, you can see these labial glands, which are mainly mucous glands with occasional serous acini. In between, we have the skeletal muscle, orbicularis oris, in between the two surfaces. And here, at the junction between the two surfaces, we have the red margin or the red line vermilion. This red line in this picture is characterized by marked corrugation or uh, folding of uh, the basement membrane. Here we have uh, numerous uh, papillae at this uh, side. It is formed of uh, skin, but it is of a very thin skin, transparent skin, and uh, it is devoid of uh, hair follicles, devoid of sebaceous gland, devoid of sweat glands, uh, this is the vermilion or the red marsh. This is the outer surface of the lip, which is covered by the thin skin here, uh, characterized by the presence of the hair follicles and the associated sebaceous gland. This is a hair follicle, this is a sebaceous gland, hair follicle also, uh, and this is the uh, lamina propria underneath this uh, epithelium. This is the inner surface of the lip, which is um, uh, covered by the uh, oral mucosa, non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Underneath this uh, epithelium, we have the lamina propria, which is a loose connective tissue containing blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics, in addition to the accessory salivary or the minor salivary glands, here, this gland is called labial gland. This labial gland here is tubulo alveolar. It is a tubulo alveolar glands and it is predominantly mucous glands. It is mucous glands. As you see, we have here the pale stain cells and the basal nuclei at the 
uh, acini or the cells forming the acini. The uh, tubulo alveolar or tubulo acinar means that the secretory part is in part of it in form of tube and the other part is in the form of uh, uh, acinus or alveolus. So this is the secretory part, tubulo acinar or tubulo alveolar. So you have here in the sections of the secretory part some small parts and some wide parts. This is depending on the level in which the section was taken, either in the tubular or in the acinar part. This is the red margin of or the red line of the lip or the vermilion. This vermilion it is formed of the thin skin, but this skin is devoid, has no. Hair has no sebaceous glands, has no sweat glands. This area is characterized by the deep dermal papillae, very deep dermal papillae and very numerous. The epithelium itself is transparent. The uh, connective tissue, which is the lamina propria in this area, is very rich in the blood vessels. So the transparent epithelium and the rich amount of blood vessels resp are responsible for the red coloration of uh, this uh, area. This is again a diagram for the lip showing the two sides and the red margin. Here we have the skin side with the hair follicles here and we have here uh, the sweat glands and the sebaceous glands should be present in relation to the hair follicles and this is the lamina propria containing blood vessels, nerves and lymphatics. Here we have the muscle, skeletal muscle, voluntary muscle which is called the orbicularis oris muscle and the nucleus is present at the peripheral position. And on the other side we have the mucous membrane which is uh, an oral mucosa formed of non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and the lamina propria here containing blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics in addition to the labial glands which are predominantly mucous glands and they are tubulo-alveolar or tubulo -acinar. Uh, here the vermilion or the red margin, it is formed of thin skin but no sweat, no sebaceous, no hair follicles and it is characterized by the following characters. It is transparent and it shows very deep papillae but the transparent appearance it is it's not a histological character. As regards the histological character, it is rich in these dermal papillae which are deep. And the connective tissue or the lamina propria in this area is very rich in the blood vessels. So blood vessels, the deep papillae, the uh, skin, thin skin, the absence of uh, sebaceous sweat glands and absence also of hair fork. This is a section for the tongue which is um, present inside the oral cavity and it is characterized by dorsal surface and ventral surface. Uh, this is a section in the tongue and you can see here the dorsal surface of the tongue characterized by the presence of projections which are the papillae formed of the epithelium and underneath the epithelium we have the connective tissue. These are of course the filiform papillae which are conical in shape. The most important structure in this picture is the skeletal muscles. Here we have three directions that are present perpendicular or at right angle to each other. This one is the longitudinal muscle and this one is the transverse muscle and this one is the vertical muscle or our skeletal voluntary muscle. Uh, this uh, uh, diagram to demonstrate the site and the types of the lingual papillae. As you see here we have this uh, Numerous dots here are the filiform papillae, which are the most numerous papillae. And those rounded structures, which are mostly red in color, they are the fungiform papillae. And we have at the junction between the anterior two thirds and the posterior third, we have the circumvallate papillae on this sulcus terminus. In the posterior third, we have the lingual tonsil. And here you can see the palatine tonsil, those are studied in the first year. These 
uh, a diagram shows or demonstrate the filiform papillae, which are uh, numerous and they are covered with the keratinized stratified squamous, the keratin is present on the tip of these papillae. Here we have also the fungiform papillae here, and we have the papillae which are surrounded by groove. These are the circumvallate papillae. These are the containing or the most rich in the taste buds and the side walls. Under that we have, of course, the connective tissue containing blood vessels, nerves, as well lymphatics, as you see in the picture. Here you see the uh, lingual tonsil, lymph follicles here, and this is the crypt. This is a section in the tongue demonstrating the filiform papillae. This is the only type which is covered by keratinized stratified squamous epicele. And this is the only type which is devoid, has no taste buds. Under that you can see the connective tissue corium containing the blood vessels, the nerves, lymphatics, in addition to the lingual glands. These are um, accessory or minor salivary glands. They are mixed serum mucus glands. Of course, you know that they open by uh, ducts in the ventral side of the tip of the tongue. By three or four ducts in the ventral side of the tip of the tongue. Also, you can notice here the uh, fat cells of uh, adipose or fatty tissue present in the connective tissue under this papillae. Again, this is the filiform papillae, which is the only type covered with the keratin, especially at the top of the papillae, and this will give rise to the whitish appearance of the dorsum of the tongue. This is the keratin covering this stratified squamous, and this is the connective tissue core in this filiform uh, papillae. These are the two filiform papillae and they have no taste buds. Uh, this is a diagram for the second type, which is a fungiform papillae. They are called fungiform because they look like a fungus or a mushroom. They have a wide apex and a narrow base. They are covered by non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and with a few test buds, as you see here. Also, the connective tissue here is rich in blood vessels, giving the red coloration for this uh, uh, fungiform papillae on the surface of the tongue. They appear like red spots on the dorsum of the tongue. This is an actual section in this fungiform papillae that have uh, a mushroom shape with uh, a wide apex and a narrow base covered by the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, this is a section in the tongue showing the circumvallate papillae. They are called circumvallate because they are surrounded all through by this groove in uh, uh, this picture. So this is called circumvallate papillae, the papilla which is surrounded by a valley or a groove all through. Here the groove on one side and the other groove on the other side, it is characterized by being covered by non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and it is showing large number of the taste buds surrounded by the groove, not projecting on the surface of the tongue and underneath this uh, Papillae, you can see the very important serous glands, which is one of the uh, minor salivary glands called von Ebner serous glands. These are the serous acini, and this is a duct. Also, this is a duct. Again, this is a picture of the circumvallate papillae. How can we know it? By the presence of groove on the sides of this uh, uh, section papillae. So it is called circumvallate papillae, the presence of many test buds at the side walls, and it is covered by the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And most important is the presence of these von Ebner serous glands, and as you see, their ducts open in the groove surrounding this papillae. 
This is a diagram for the fourth type of papillae, which is called papilla foliata. They are poorly developed in the human being and well developed in the rabbits, monkeys, and many other animals. They are covered by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and they are having test buds. They are having test buds, a lot of test buds here in the side walls. They are characterized by the presence of parallel ridges of epithelium alternating with the papillae of the connective tissue. So it consists of two or more parallel ridges and furrows. This is the ridge and this is the furrow. And they are present on the dorsal lateral surface of the tongue, as we have said, in the tongue of rabbit. Very important that we have here, uh, underneath this uh, papillae, we have uh, serous glands. Serous glands in the lamina propria that will discharge the secretion by ducts. These ducts here open into the clefts, separating the papillae from each other. So in this cleft between this one and the other, it is the site of opening of the ducts of the serous glands, which are slightly deeper than the duct. This is the uh, section, exact section of the papilla foliata, parallel ridges and alternating with furrows, two ridges alternating with furrows, non keratinized stratified squamous, taste buds, as you see, and we have here the ducts of uh, the serous glands that open in the clefts or in the spaces in between the uh, neighboring uh, papilla foliata. This is a section showing the papilla foliata, which are present uh, in good uh, number in uh, the dorsum of the tongue of rabbit. Uh, as you see, it is characterized by the presence of uh, two parallel ridges alternating with uh, the furrows, the presence of uh, test buds uh, in large numbers, and the uh, rectangular appearance. They are separated by uh, these uh, clefts in between these uh, uh, buds. Uh, also, we have here uh, the serous glands, and we have the skeletal muscle present in the tongue. Here, the, uh, the serous glands are present in large numbers, and this area, which is wide, it is a duct of a serous glands, which is present more deep uh, in between the skeletal muscle fibers. So this is a duct, and this is uh, the acinoi, serous acinoi, have narrower lumen compared to the uh, duct, which has uh, a wide lumen. So these are acinoi, and this is a duct, a skeletal muscle, at different directions, and this is the connective tissue corium, papilla foliata, taste buds, and that's all in this picture. Uh, this is a diagram for the taste buds. The taste bud is onion shape, and it is present in three sides. It is present in the tongue papillae, in the soft palate, epiglottis, and pharynx. Four sides for the taste bud should be remembered. So you have to remember the site of the taste buds, and they are four sides. Uh, also, you should remember the structure of the test bud. It is formed of uh, supporting cells, which are here dark, and uh, do not show uh, the nerve endings at the base. And the gustatory or the uh, neuroepithelial test cells, they are lightly stained, and they show nerve endings, unmyelinated nerve fibers at the base, to take the sensation to the central nervous system, and at the apex you will see evident long microvilli. So in this picture, you can differentiate between the dark, supporting, the light, the uh, gustatory. Also, you can see this uh, basal cell, which is a stem cell for both types. You should then also study the function of each uh, type of cell. Here, the supporting cell is responsible for the secretion of amorphous glycoprotein material that surrounds the microvilli in the test pore for protection. And, of course, the gustatory cell is responsible for the taste sensation. 
and the basal cell act, acts as stem cells for the renewal of the test cells and supporting cells. So this is as regards this uh, picture. If we move to this uh, actual section in the tongue papillae, and of course these are the papilla foliata characterized by the parallel ridges, you can see at the side walls the taste buds. So these are taste buds, these are the three taste buds, and here in the box we have another taste bud which is uh, magnified here to see. This is the opening which is called taste pore. And here we have uh, the different types of cells present in the taste bud. Here you cannot differentiate uh, between the supporting and the statory by the color of the cytoplasm. But we have another feature here. Here we have these nuclei which are more rounded and more large here. These are the nuclei of gustatory cells. While the oval compressed nuclei they are the nuclei of supporting cells so in this picture i cannot differentiate between these two important cells by the color of the cytoplasm or the presence of afferent nerve fibers or the presence of microbial life i will differentiate by the shape of the nuclei the large nucleus is the gestatory the more compressed nucleus is the supporting cell of course you can see here the basal cell at the base of the taste bud. Again in this um, diagram you can see that the taste bud here is flask or onion shape and it opens or the cells are uh, projecting in the taste pool. Here the dark cells are the supporting and the lightly stained cells are the taste cells or the gustatory cells and the cells at the base are the basal cell for the renewal of uh, the other two types of cells. Here you can see the afferent unmyelinated nerve fibers related to the taste cells. But at the top you can see that both cells have microvilli, which is true. But actually the microvilli of the taste cells are very long and they are several times the diameter of the microvilli, the ordinary microvilli. In the other picture, you can see actually the section here showing the taste buds. And here we have basal cells. We have the large nucleus of the gustatory. The compressed is of the supporting. So this is large and more or less pale. It is the gustatory. And the dark and slightly compressed, it is for the supporting cell. Again, in this picture, you can notice the taste bud and this opening here, this small opening here is the taste pore and surrounding the taste bud we have the ordinary epithelium present in the oral cavity and inside the taste bud itself you can see the uh, different types of cells. This dark nucleus, it is of the supporting, this pale and large it is for the test cell or gustatory cell and the nuclei which are at the base like this one it is of the stem cell or the basal cell of course you know that each epithelium here it is a ridge part of the ridge of the papilla foliata and this is a connective tissue which is always called lamina propria and it is the connective tissue under the epithelium so this is the papilla foliata and this is the epithelium covering the papilla foliata and this is one of the epithelial ridges present in the papilla foliata. Uh, this is a slide in the trial test. It is the first slide. Here you can see that the question E, you have to identify this uh, surface which is uh, the uh, skin cells. How did you know that? By the presence of the keratin. So it is a keratinized stratified squamous. It is of the skin surface. The section is in the lip. Of course, it is the lip which has a skin at one side and oral mucosa or non keratinized stratified squamous on the other side. Uh, here you can see the label C, it is for the red margin or the vermilion and here it is finished 
the identification, the skin surface, the red margin, and the here B, it is the mucous membrane side or the inner side or the inner surface of the lip. If you have a label on this, it is the skeletal muscle or peculiaris oris. If you have a label on this, it is the hair follicle. Label on this, it is the sebaceous gland. So these are hair follicles here, and this is the sebaceous gland. This is also a second slide in the trial test. First, identify the two surfaces. Surface A, it is the surface of the inner side or the mucous membrane of the inner side. And surface B, it is the skin side or the outer surface of the lip. Uh, one, it is a hair follicle. Two, it is the labial glands. Here, the labial glands. Three, it is the skeletal muscle, which is a pseudophilic mass present in between the two sides. The third slide here identify the surface of the lip. This surface is the outer surface of the lip which is covered by skin. Identify one hair follicle, two sebaceous glands, three the skeletal muscle or peculiaris ores. If you have a label on these structures, these are blood vessels and these are fat cells, blood vessels, fat cells. Slide number four, which uh, surface of the lip is A? This is the inner surface or the mucous membrane side. Identify the A, it is the non-cratinized stratified squamous epithelium. B, it is the labial glands which are mainly mucous with occasional sears. C, it is the connective tissue corium under the epithelium and it contains blood vessels, nerves and lymphatics. You, in identification, you just mention the name, don't describe. D, here, D, here is a blood vessel, as you see, it contains blood inside. Section 5, uh, this is a section in the lip. One represents the inner surface of the lip or inner side of the lip formed of the mucous membrane. And it is characterized by the labial glands in its loop power. Number two represents the outer surface or the skin surface characterized by the hair follicle. So this is the inner surface and this is the outer surface. The green arrow points to the vermilion border and the black star denotes the skeletal muscle or peculiaris oris. This is a section in the tongue. The uh, label 2 here represents the dorsal surface characterized by the papillae and the uh, number three represents the ventral surface and it is characterized by having no papillae compared to the dorsal surface. If you have a label here, it is the skeletal muscle of the tongue. Uh, this type of papillae are the filiform papillae, which is the only type covered by the keratin and the only type devoid of taste buds. Uh, this, uh, the type of muscle here is, of course, a skeletal muscle. The orientation is the vertical and transverse orientation. This is a section in the tongue. Identify the orientation of the skeletal muscle in the field. M1, it is vertical. Mc, it is uh, transverse. The papillae here in this picture, A, the papillae here are characterized by surrounding, by being surrounded by this groove, so it is the circumvallate, and also the presence of many test buds here confirm our diagnosis. It is the circumvallate papillae, in addition to the presence of these glands underneath, so it is the circumvallate papillae. 
But here it is in B, it is the filiform papillae, which is the only type devoid of test buds and covered with keratin. This picture is very characteristic. It is uh, the picture for the papilla foliata rectangles with two parallel ridges um, alternating with the furrows and the presence of many test buds at the side walls. And this, of course, are uh, the connective, this is the connective tissue underneath the papillae and these are ducts of the glands and these are the minor salivary glands. This is a part of the muscle of the tongue. This is also a picture for the circumvallate papilla, characterized by the presence of this groove on either side, which is actually surrounding the whole papilla, and the presence of many taste buds at the side walls. Of course, these are glands, and these uh, near all are these glands in this picture. Again, this is also a picture, very nice picture for the papilla foliata, and the taste buds are here. These are the parallel ridges, and these are ducts of the glands, the minor salivary glands that will open in the cleft between the adjacent papillae. Yes, this is a very nice picture. It shows the uh, two types of papillae, the filiform papillae, which are conical in shape, keratinized, have no taste buds. The other type, which is have a mushroom shape or a broad apex and a narrow base, and uh, uh, it is uh, more or less highly vascular. You can see many blood vessels here, and the uh, base membrane is corrugated. This is the fungiform papilla. No grooves surrounding, so it is not circumvallate. It is uh, also containing a few test buds not prominent like that of the circumvallate. So, no grooves, no abundant or evident test buds can be seen here. So, this is the fungiform papilla. Here, the circumvallate papilla, very evident by the grooves and the numerous test buds here. So, you cannot uh, uh, mistake this uh, type of papillae. And we have here uh, the von Ebner serous glands that will open in this uh, valley or in this groove uh, surrounding the circumvallate papillae. This is the picture for the papilla foliata. Uh, name its components. One, it is the epithelial ridge. Two, it is uh, the furrow form of connective tissue. And number three, it is a taste bud. Black arrows points to the serous glands. Black arrow here points to the serous glands, as in I. And the blue arrow, as it shows, it points to the duct of these serous glands that open in the furrow between, or in the cliff, I'm sorry, in the cliff between the adjacent papilla foliata. The structures pointed to by the black arrows, all of these are the taste buds. This opening is called taste to pore. And the uh, cells here um, can be seen by their nuclei. And then they are located at the sides of the papilla foliata. How did I know? Because of the presence of this uh, epithelial ridge and this furrow, ridge and furrow, ridge and furrow. So this is the papilla foliata. Uh, identify the structures indicated by the arrows. They are, of course, the taste buds. Uh, they belong to a modified type of epithelium known as neuroepithelium. Sites include, as I have said, they have four sites. They are present in the papillae, tongue papillae. They are present in the soft palate, in epiglottis and pharynx. The stars here indicate the taste bud. They are our taste buds. They are formed of hair cell or gustatory cell or taste cell and supporting cell. This is a supporting cell nucleus and basal cell. So we have identified them by the shape and the position of nuclei. The basal cell by the position, the gustatory by the shape 
and the appearance of the nucleus more rounded, more pale, and the supporting or um, sustained tentacular cell, it is characterized by the presence of the dark nucleus.